from Seattle, Washington, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube on the ground at OpenStack Day Seattle 2015. Now, here's your host, John Furrier. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cube on the ground here in Seattle. We are here for the Linux Con, that, which happened yesterday, but here, OpenStack Innovation Day. I'm John Furrier with the Cube. Our next guest is Shiram Cloud Don at Cloud Don <laughs> on Twitter. Thought leader, influence in the OpenStack community. Great to see you again. Thanks, John. Great to see you again, and uh, it's nice to have you guys. Really nice appreciate our foray to the Pacific Northwest with the Cube. It's not live, but it's on the ground, which we love doing, and and capturing the thought leaders. I got to ask you, OpenStack's having an Innovation Day here at the Washington Athletic yeah. Club. Um, great participation. This is not a, just a meetup; it's a no. mini event, and um, a lot of folks here, right off the road from Taipei, and you got Tokyo right around the corner. OpenStack SV coming up. What's happening right now? Sure, that's right. I want to stress it that this is the first time we are having a one-day OpenStack event in Seattle. It's kind of surprising to know that on a cloudy city like Seattle, we don't, uh, we didn't, we never had an OpenStack conference. So I'm pretty excited to bring that here, and uh, this is also the first time that we are having a fully loaded track on telcos across any other city on OpenStack days. So that those two are really good. And what is happening about OpenStack, you know, uh, we just, you just got out of LinuxCon, and of course there was a lot of buzz about containers, right? So um, the three things that I'm, I'm seeing that, uh, two combined essentially towards enterprise, but one around telcos, right? So there's a big push on making containers native on OpenStack, make, make the OpenStack the native platform for containers, there's a big push there. And that kind of ties in with how to make enterprises happy, so OpenStack enterprises, and then the second major push is that uh, enabling telco applications, NFP applications. So those two are the real thing, or those three are the real thing, and are the big hap biggest things happening in OpenStack. Well, the, the continued mission of stability, obviously one of the core tenants we're hearing over and over again, but yet run faster, more functionality, gets Absolutely. keep the stability, but add the innovation. Kubernetes, you got a bunch of stuff going on around container, container management, it's gotta be easy to deploy, but now the wrinkle in the equation is not just developers and partners, it's operators. So talk about the role of the operators. You mentioned telcos. What's the status of the operators? Are they happy? Do they want more? Are they, what are they, what are they, what are they what's, what's going on right now? Sure, I think, I think the right way to answer is like they're happier, <laughs> right? And uh, you mentioned on stability part, right? And, and I would take it for any projects, right? So uh, yes, Kubernetes can scale too, and, but generally like speaking, when, it's when the rubber uh, hits the road, that's where the problems will be, right? But one good thing is OpenStack has taken operators' feedback much more seriously, and then we have a better loop of feeding back the op operator feedback into OpenStack product development. So a bunch of folks here are just coming back live from the operators' mid-cycle meetup in Sa Bay Area. So, um, so bottom line is operators have more say in, in how OpenStack is gonna be, and it's much more clearer now than last year. And they're participating more. We just interviewed oh, yeah. eBay, and we heard Walmart mentioned by Jonathan Bright. So what's, I mean, operators are in the ecosystem. And any new names you can share, or what's the key operators up here in Seattle? What's, give us some more data. Oh, nice. Oh, it's interesting in operators here, right? I think uh, the Blue Box guys are the biggest players in OpenStack. Uh, their model was interesting because they own the operator spot, right? The clients are not really because of the managed cloud model, managed private cloud model. So they are the biggest operators per se, even though they're one of the vendors and are part of IBM. But they're also like, they serve a bunch of customers like uh, Big big Fish Games and then Conquer was served by somebody else. So there are, there's, there's a little bit of operators, uh, sorry, users uh, community here, even though there are two big vendors. It used to be three big vendors, but um, with Nebula going away, it's just HP and IBM on Blue Box, right? I think you bring up the good point about Blue Box. We love Jesse, and I was a Blue Box big fan, but now they're part of the mothership at IBM, of which we cover all their events, so IBM the big push in here. Is there an opportunity for op a new operator? I mean, we're seeing huge opportunities. Obviously, Blue Box yep. was a great example of some entrepreneurial yep. creativity and growth, and self-funded. They took some outside financing, ultimately had a great exit, yep. um, but there's more opportunities, or is there more opportunities? So, so interesting thing is, like, I think I, I want to tie this conversation with with into uh, where startups are in the OpenStack ecosystem, right? The first round of startups are all, all about installations and make the distributions better. And then now the big players getting in, Red Hat, HP, Canonical, Suze, you know, so they are having a good handle on how to make the uh, distribution solve some of the problems that operators face, that enterprises face, right? Now, that's, that's kind of settling down, but interesting thing to look at is now we're talking more about applications, right? Whether enabling via containers or, or it's not exactly a past there yet, but think about more what kind of applications I can run on, right? So, and, and I'm seeing a lot of more uh, startups working on solving those problems. So, 
that's, that's what I want to say where the OpenStack ecosystem is going, but it doesn't mean to say that there is no role for operators. Still, still it is, uh, uh, the infrastructure will be largely like operator dependent, right? Mm -hmm. So the one thing that we can uh, hope for, which is good for OpenStack, would be like how to make it much more easier for operators. I am not seeing uh, the operator's role completely going away, which as long as we stay at IAS level, right? Mm -hmm. How the customers are consuming it, are they going to consume it like, a, like, like how managed private cloud is, so they are not, they are oblivious to the, uh, infrastructure layer, or they're just only talking about um, past layer, anything on top of it. That's still like, it's a different consumption model. Someone is gonna still deal with operators, and as long as like um, they are there, we need to make their life easier. If, uh, if there's opportunities, entrepreneurs will sniff it out. But you bring up the question about um, entrepreneurial opportunities. Yeah. You know, we were just talking earlier here on the cube on the ground is that it's a software problem, not an IT problem here at OpenStack. So that's a big opportunity. What software opportunities are you seeing, or white spaces do you see entrepreneurs focusing in on? We've heard, you know, portability from Swarm to you know uh, Kubernetes, making Kubernetes easier, sure. making container management easier. Right. It seems to be a slew of little white spaces that entrepreneurs can come in and get a position. No, I agree with you. I think I think with with everybody talking about containers and orchestration, right? There's definitely a lot of opportunity there. There's also a lot of good players there, right? CoreOS, Mesos, they're all kicking ass there. So um, it, it's interesting to, uh, in, I'm not saying it's a white space there, I'm not saying there's no innovation possibly there, but definitely we can make it easier. But I also want to look at something more, right? So the customers really care about their LOB applications, right? What, ca what can we do that? Can we make running the applications easier? Can we get more uh, monitoring better on that? Can you make your life uh, can you make your application lifecycle management easier, right? There are a bunch of startups, like we have AppFormix here and, and, and doing this though, right? And then the, the other side of the equation is like, what is the security story, for instance, right? What is the compliance story? There's still white spaces out there. Um, from a developer point of view, we can say that, hey, just everything is in the log, I can just check mark it, right? But that's not how customers, customers want it, right? So what is a good package solution there, right? So, and then again, like there are other kind of innovations too, right? We talked about NFE a little bit, right? Now, there was a lot of um, uh, innovations on like storage and networking. We had a lot of uh, Solidfire, Ceph, Ink Tank, um, Big Embrain, Big Switch, those kind of startups, right? But what would be the next one, right? So, Akanda, for instance. So, uh, they are moving a level above still like solving the problem of ne virtualized networking, but instead of at uh, the level two and below, right? Mm -hmm. They're doing at the level above. So those are some of the opportunities that they are, they are looking at it, but of course there's more. And, and, and one more thing taking is like, I think there's a talk about hyper-converged solutions or like entire. So how can we do it better? Can you have a, I, I hate to say the single pen of glaze, I mean, it's, it's a very cliche expression, but you know, like anything that, that just don't do it with just a piecemeal computer storage or networking, but can you do it at, at a much higher level? So uh, those are the some spaces that I'm seeing uh, actually happening and I expect to happen more. Well, the good news is we heard from Sabu from eBay is that it's an engineering opportunity. It's not just so much write some code and you're off the races. Right. It's a combination of software plus some engineering. So that's cool. So great opportunities for entrepreneurs. Obviously they can get involved in meetups, local environments, but it's, it's this local scene, OpenStack, uh, certainly we're in Palo Alto and in Massachusetts, but we're seeing it there. But here in Seattle, you're here. You brought this uh, together, this event together. Um, are you happy with what's going on here? Uh, you want to see more? I mean, Blue Box just sold to the dark side <laughs> with IBM. They no I'm longer are a standalone venture. I mean, they got more cash to work with with yeah. IBM. No. But I mean, what else is out here? I'm excited, you know, like, um, what else is out here? Like, uh, of course, like, it is, it just shows like what is the awareness of OpenStack in this city. Like, it's it's a hometown of cloud computing. We have Amazon and Azure here, right? But you know, uh, as much as there's, there's a mind share for them here, we do not have a lot of mind share with OpenStack, but it's I definitely increasing, right? The uh, big blue box guys and HP guys are like doing a lot of OpenStack meetups, creating a lot of momentum out there. This is just like uh, I would say this event is kind of establishing uh, this the flag pole of Seattle into the OpenStack roadmap and then say that this is a significant presence here. And then, uh, not to mention there's there are at least a couple of startups here working on like under, uh, stealth mode. I, I've, I've been talking to them and then they're, one of them is working on storage, making mm -hmm. storage much easier based on like using OpenStack, right? So, so um, it is going to be interesting to see whether like we have the big players here, what, who's going to be next is an interesting question to ask. But I would say that like we are at a much more uh, state which is more hopeful for OpenStack and more positive for OpenStack. And this event is a, d it, it's a demo of that one. Uh, we were a little bit hesitant, I was a little bit hesitant to have like 150 people here to, to have the event. I scaled on from 200 to 150, but we were sold out. And then like we got 175 registered and we got 30 more uh, waitlisted. So I'm very ecstatic and I would like to thank all the sponsors and 
specifically thank the OpenStack Foundation, and I also want to, want to thank the Linux Foundation who allowed us to be a co-located event. So uh, with, with all that help, this, this event is going to be a huge success. Well, OpenStack certainly has been resilient. I've been following it since, the, since it was a, a glimmer in the eyes of a lot of folks, and then watched it turn into a marketing event, then it really became yeah. real. Mm -hmm. And since that point, it's always survived the rhetoric of OpenStack is dead. I mean, it always moves faster, oh, always right. gets stable. I mean, even some are saying, oh, you look at this and that, and OpenStack, it's not dead. No, Share not your perspective yes, on yes. that. No, absolutely. So th the community is very resilient, right? I would say it's, it's more than resilient, it's more agile. And then um, the developers, of course, are the key. And then the, the, now the users in the equation, right? So there was a little bit of mismatch between uh, what developers implemented or brought in for the users and then users were not very happy with it. Now that the loop is much more uh, tighter, you know, so we are in a better shape to, to handle anything any, anymore. So kind of stepping back from the, uh, stepping up from the, from, the, from the software part of it, right? It really, m what matters is like how many users are going to adopt it and then what happens at the customer side, right? You can talk a lot about like these cool new toys, containers, MISOs, and all those things. They will also face the same problem when they go sell to the customers. And then, so, uh, so like what two years ago was, my, uh, was OpenStack, now we are seeing with the container ecosystem, right? But when you, when you go take to the data centers and put down in the work production, that's where the issues are gonna be. So taking that, combining with where OpenStack is right now, OpenStack is a much more better state to handle those things. Mm -hmm. We have been getting a lot of feedback from real users. Of course, I would appreciate, I would, I would like to have much more users, much more larger mm -hmm. deployments. And, and one more thing is like, we should not treat OpenStack as an isolated entity, right? Like it's gonna be, realistically speaking, can users are gonna have, have multiple um, abstractions, right? Mm -hmm. So how much well that OpenStack is able to adapt to these new things, that's gonna be success of OpenStack. And, and the indications are correct. It's going in the right direction. I want it to continue in the right direction. And in Seattle, great tech community here. Obviously, a lot of, lot of smart people. Obviously, well-educated. Got Microsoft, Amazon, OpenStack, a lot of developers. You know, they got a football team that's competitive <laughs> now. So, you know, yeah, you we, know. We just, you know, we just thought a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> if you look at, you know, San Francisco, it's Silicon Valley, Seattle, with the, and then obviously New England with Tom Brady. Um, very competitive environment here, yeah. technology-wise. Yes, it is very competitive. I think what could be a little bit lacking from, from an entrepreneurship point of view is the VC funding, VC uh, pool of money, right? So um, the lot of, lot of mm, Microsoft millionaires and Amazon millionaires are not there yet quite to give it back, but it's improving. It's lot, I have seen the last five years it has improved a lot. There's a lot of activity happening around. Uh, the There's a generational yeah. DNA established here in Seattle, yeah. going back to Microsoft. Now you have Amazon right. exploding. Now you have OpenStack exploding. A lot of great stuff. That's true. And also, like we are also we, we are a little bit nicer. We are um, mm -hmm. Dan Bay area. I would say the Seattle uh, community is a little bit. People are chill here. They seem relaxed <laughs> all the time. Yes, it is. It's yeah. Everybody who comes here. <laughs> so you know. That, so but but not to mention. I mean, it doesn't mean to say that we we lack entrepreneurship here. The Seattle tech. Seattle tech community is like is improving its uh, its entrepreneurial um, show, shows, so uh, you can expect to see much more startups and making with more uh, names soon. All right, we're here in Seattle. This is the Cube on the ground. We are exploring all the data out here in Seattle. OpenStack Innovation Day a meetup here in San Francisco, uh, Seattle. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. This is the Cube on the ground. Thank you so much, John. And I would like to add one more thing. Uh, this this particular event, we we had a stress, stress on the including diversity and inclusive in inclusiveness. So uh, that has shown off. We have a lot more female participation, and then people of uh, minorities participating here. And anybody who's watching here, I would like to say that please think those two things and try to include that in your tech events. Tech is very inclusive here in Seattle, and obviously great community. Thanks so much for organizing this. This is the Cube on the ground. Thanks for watching. Thank you.